Hello everyone, my name is Randy Dinata. I work for GATE as a flow assurance engineer with area of expertise in petroleum production systems and fluid flow in pipes. I would like to use this opportunity to share my knowledge on the basics of fluid flow and its applications in oil and gas industry. This topic is very important as most of the things that we do in oil and gas industry typically involve fluid flow either in pipes or in porous media. For example, in a typical petroleum production system, the crude oil flows from the reservoir all the way to the separator in the surface through well bore, through flow lines, through risers, and along the lines, it will also have to flow through choke valves. So therefore, it's important to understand the fundamentals of fluid flow in these pipes so that you'll have a better understanding on how to troubleshoot things in the field when you have to, and also properly design the equipments require to transfer the oil. GATE provides series of trainings on fluid flow and this one in particular will be talking about single phase and by single phase I'm referring to either single phase gas or single phase liquid. But in this training I'll be mostly talking about single phase liquid. The combination of liquid flow and gas flow is called multiphase flow and that topic will be discussed in the other training video. I would like to start with the agenda of the training. First, I'll talk about the single phase fluid flow basics, followed by things that you need to know when performing modeling, and also the calculation pitfalls, basically things that can go wrong and how to fix them. These are important because once you understand the single phase fluid flow and the equations that you can use, most of the times the calculations that we generate may not match what's in reality in the field. And there's two major uncertainties in your calculations. First, maybe your model is incorrect or has some sort of error. And the other one is if you model it incorrectly. For example, if you enter wrong input data or you're using incorrect assumptions. There's a lot of things that you need to watch out for when performing modeling, and I'll be covering those in the calculation pitfalls. I'll try to keep this training simple, but detailed enough for you to understand what parameters matter.